Before jumping into this video, I'd like to warn you that it's going to be very long and exhaustive. I decided to make it very detailed and describe everything that you have to go through if you want to build a home nest like me. If you're impatient though, don't worry, I got you covered. Here's a timestamp for the build time lapse, and here's a timestamp for the final specs and prices. Enjoy the video! Hey everyone, do you remember this little guy? I made a video a year ago about my new home server slash NAS build, where I basically built an entire home server based on AMD Athlon 200GE in this uh, very cheap 14 euro OEM MATX enclosure. And you know, this one is pretty good. For $250, you get a relatively uh, low power server with adequate performance for uh, Plex encoding for normal NAS or home server tasks. But it's been long overdue for an upgrade. You know, there's a saying in Russia that goes like, a greedy person pays twice. So the fact that I cheaped out on my home server, you know, $250 is actually pretty cheap. It's on the level of those proprietary ARM-based NAS solutions like Synology or, you know, whatever, which provide, you know, much worse performance. So yeah, basically, let me just open the case and show you what's inside. As you can see here, we have a ASRock A320M HDV motherboard. Oh, sorry, just shook the tripod. <laughs> we have a Alpine 11 passive cooler. We have eight gigabyte of crucial DDR4 memory. We got M.2 128 gigabyte drive. And we got a Seagate two terabyte drive in here. And as I already said, the CPU is Athlon 200GE. And it's all powered by this little tiny PSU. It's called Pico PSU. 120 watt, I think. And then there's also this cell car uh, power brick, which kind of looks like a laptop power brick. So why do I want to swap this for something else? Why do I want to upgrade it? Well, a couple of reasons here. First, this case is really good if you're working with uh, limited space and budget, but there's barely any room for hard drives. So for example, I have a 3.5 drive in here and I can only put another one and that's it. Basically, that's all the room for hard drives that this case has. And actually, if you don't have limited space, if you have, you know, if you live in a mansion or whatever, you can just buy a ATX tower with a bunch of hard drive space and also maybe it will come with a power supply. It will be similar price, 15 to $30 basically. Yeah, the second thing is the airflow. And I'm really concerned about the longevity of the components in this case because the CPU is running passive and this, this box doesn't really have like any space for additional cooling, additional fans. I was able to stick this 80 millimeter fan in here as you can see there, I'm not sure if you see it in the overhead camera, but it's very noisy and, you know, I, I could bear it for maybe about two minutes and then I had to turn it off and, you know, just, just live with it, like, you know, whatever. I don't care if this computer survives or not. So this is why today we're going to build a new NAS, which maybe isn't going to be as cheap, but at least it's going to be very expandable. It's going to be more compact and it's going to have proper airflow. And I'm also going to transplant a couple of components from my current system that is the SSD, the hard drive, and the power supply. So yeah, let me just show you what I bought for the new setup, and you know, then you can yell at me in the comments and say that I bought everything wrong. So these are the components that I bought for the new NAS build. Let me just you know go over them real quick. So plot the resistance of this build is this case. Uh, it's a mini ITX NAS uh, centered case. It doesn't really have like one market name. It's a no name Chinese brand. They have different names. I saw them. I saw this under like Qi Industries and Q9 or something like that. So I'm just gonna put this in the description and on the screen if you want to buy this case. It's a little expensive. This case is $139, but it also includes the power supply, which is 250 watt Delta Electronics. 80 plus bronze and it also has the hot swappable base for hard drives. Now if you can't afford paying that much for the case and you don't really care about hot swappable base for drives, there's another option and that is Fractal Node 304 which is 90 euros currently and it is arguably better bang for your buck and it also includes 8 spaces for 3.5 hard drives but they're not hot swappable and it also doesn't include a power supply so you'll have to buy one yourself. Now, if you want to go even cheaper, there is a case called Cooler Master Elite 110, which is quite a bit smaller and shorter, and it costs about 40 euros. However, it only has officially two spaces for hard drives. I don't know, it has plenty of space, but it just doesn't have the right mounts, I guess. I wanted to go a safe route and take this case. Of course, I'm not really confident about this power supply. Not that I am afraid that my house is gonna blow up or anything, but Flex ATX power supplies always suffer from one problem, and that is whiny, annoying, loud fans. Honestly, the power supply that comes with this case is fine. 
apart from the fan. Luckily, it's really easy to replace the fan in those Flex ATX power supplies, and I can highly recommend this 40mm fan from Noctua. You can connect it directly to the CPU header on the motherboard and controller from the BIOS. And of course, it's much more quiet than the original fan. I'll link the video from Optimum Tech where he describes the process of replacing the fan. This is why I'm going to be using the Pico PCU for my old build instead. One more thing that I want to replace in this case is the fan. This one has 120mm fan, which, you know, I, I don't have a lot of confidence in those OEM fans that they ship with cases. They're always loud. So instead of both this fan, this is Arctic P12 Silence. Arctic is like crazy when it comes to, you know, bang for your buck. You can basically get a five pack of those for the price of one Noctua A12 X25 fan, which is just bonkers. If you live in a hot climate or plan to run fast, 7200 RPM hard drives, you should really invest into extra fans for this case, since those drives tend to get really toasty under load. I had a pair of slim 92mm Noctua fans lying around, so that's what I decided to use. I basically zip tied them to both sides of the drive cage and they really did wonders when it comes to temperatures. They are virtually inaudible and in my case helped to reduce the drive temperatures by 5 to 7 degrees. Now next thing is the motherboard and as you can see this is not a AMD motherboard this is ASRock J4105 ITX and you might want to ask you know why why did you change from AMD to Intel you know you can just buy an ITX motherboard for AMD the thing is the ITX motherboards for AM4 are about as expensive as this motherboard plus CPU bundle and seeing how this Intel Celeron J4105 ITX sports uh, hardware HEVC 10 bit video decoding and encoding and it's very 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 energy efficient i think the idle consumption of the whole like motherboard is less than 5 watts whereas my old nas consumes about 20 25 watts which is you know which is something at least when you live in a country where you have to you know actually pay a lot for electricity if you don't care about electricity you can forget about all this custom crap you can just buy like any cheap pentium 4 tower and like make it a nas now for the hard drives i decided to go with these refurbished hgst four terabyte drives, there's two of them, and I'm also going to be reusing my old two terabyte Seagate hard drive, which has been running just, just fine, you know? So that gives us about 10 terabyte of overall storage, and I think it's a pretty nice deal. Do not buy these hard drives unless you have a separate server cabinet or somewhere where you can stick your NAS and never hear it again. Those are 7200 RPM enterprise drives and they're extremely loud. Idle noise is one thing, but when you actually read or write to them, they sound like a f typing machine. Personally, I found a pair of WD MyBook 6 terabyte drives on Amazon Warehouse for 93 euros each. What was the catch, you might ask? severe damages to the external shell. This is obviously relevant here because I am interested in the actual internal hard drives in those enclosures and not the enclosures themselves. I can highly recommend those external hard drives because they're actually much cheaper when it comes to the price per gigabyte and you can easily disassemble them and take out the actual hard drives from the enclosures, usually without even voiding the warranty. One more thing to mention here is that some power supplies do not support the SATA 3.3 volt spec, which is required to supply power to those drives. Luckily, this problem is really easy to fix by taping some pins on the drive. I'll link the guide in the description of this video. Now for the memory, I basically decided to not go with anything fancy. I just bought uh, two of those Micron 4 gigabyte DR4 sodium sticks from someone on eBay Klenanzeigen, which is basically like a local marketplace. and. Also also, I forgot to mention that yes, this motherboard takes laptop memory, which is weird. The rest is basically accessories. This is, uh, you know, one SATA to two SATA Y splitter. These are the 3.5 to 2.5 adapters that came with this case. And this is also USB internal header to USB external port connector. And I'm going to explain in a second why I need it. So this motherboard doesn't have an M.2 slot for storage. And at the same time, I want to use my M.2 SATA SSD for my previous build. And also, I didn't want to waste an additional SATA port because this motherboard only has four. So I decided to connect my M.2 drive via USB 3.0, which in terms of like NAS usage or home server usage, I doubt I'll like actually see any kind of performance degradation because even though it's a boot drive, USB 3.0 speeds should be enough to run a boot drive and something like that. So yeah, that's what I went with. And to complement this, I also bought this M.2 to USB converter, I think it's from the same company, so it kind of looks like an oversized flash drive, and yeah, this is what I'm going to be using. No, buddy, I don't think you will. 
This adapter is extremely buggy and it causes multiple input output errors when you try to use it as a boot drive. I don't recommend using it, obviously. <laughs> using an M.2 to SATA adapter like this one will definitely be a better idea, but as I already said, you will lose an additional SATA port on the motherboard. Honestly, if you don't have an M.2 SSD lying around, feel free to use any USB flash drive since NAS operating systems like FreeNAS and Unraid are actually made to be run from a USB drive. And OpenMediaVault has a plugin that reduces the number of writes to the flash memory, thus prolonging its lifespan. This is what I'm currently using and honestly, the performance is fine, despite it being a USB drive. So yeah, these are the components. I'm pretty sure I didn't forget anything. So yeah, let me just uh, show you something to compare the size of this NAS to my current desktop system, which I use for gaming, video editing, etc. This is my current desktop system. This is then a 4 and this baby currently has Ryzen 5 2600 and also Nvidia 2060 Super in it. And it is even smaller than this NAS, but you know, you have to take into account that this baby also has four 3.5 hard drive slots and this one has none. If you really hate yourself, you can also mount 2.5 SSD here or in the bottom, but it's gonna be a pain in the ass because, you know, ITX cases do be like that. So yeah, I think I've blabbered enough. Let's build it. Let's have some fun. Something's gonna go wrong. It's gonna be great. Yeah, let's do it.
First thing that I had to do before building the machine is take the components out of my old NAS. This mostly went fine, you know, without any problems, apart from the power brick. I had fixed it to the shell using very strong command tape and actually had to wedge it with a screwdriver to remove it. As soon as I opened the new case though, I saw the first problem. The connectors on the hot swap PCB were Molex, not SATA. And that wouldn't be a problem if I used the power supply that comes with the case. However, I decided to use my Pico PCU and it only had one Molex connector. I didn't want to buy it on Amazon and wait two days for delivery, so I decided to make my own using my terrible soldering skills. Other than that, building in this case was basically a breeze. Obviously, I didn't need to put, you know, custom water cooling or, or a graphics card and that made it easier, but I expected there to be some problems. Since I didn't have any command strips left, I decided to fix the power brick to the place where the Flex ATX would be with the old command strips left over from the previous case and it kind of stays in one place but I really should make a trip to the hardware store at some point. After I finished building in the enclosure it was time to plug it in and see if it actually posts and it did. Unfortunately there was something wrong with my arch installation and I wasn't able to get it to work, so I decided to fire up an Ubuntu Live CD and it detected all of my hard drives, which is nice. I'm currently running Open Media Vault on this NAS and I'll definitely make a video about the software part of the setup as soon as I figure everything out, so stay tuned. So yeah, this is how I built a home server slash NAS with 14 terabytes of storage for myself. And now we come to one of the most important aspects of the video, and that is the price. Now in the video about my previous home server that I made a year ago, I basically said that this is a budget solution and it did cost about 250 euros for the whole thing with the hard drives. However, this NAS is not really cheap. It's double that price, but at the same time, it does have seven times more storage. It has 14 terabytes of storage, you know, unlike the previous one that had two. It's more power efficient and it's smaller. So apart from the build that we did today, I decided to include two more budget builds that let you save some money by sacrificing some bells and whistles but without compromises on storage or performance. So basically instead of this case, the EOLIZE SVD NC114, you can buy a case called Fractal Note 304 and the Be Quiet 300 watt power supply. And by doing this you'll be able to save 40 euros. Now that's not a lot, but if you're working with a tight budget and you want your NAS to be small and compact, this is the way to go. It actually has eight hard drive slots, but they're unfortunately not hot swappable. Now, if you want to save even more money in this build and you don't care about the aesthetics or the size, just get any cheap ATX tower with plenty of hard drive space and be done with it. Honestly, you can find those on yard sales, on flea markets, on local marketplaces, on Facebook. They usually cost about 15 to 30 bucks and very often they will actually come with a power supply. So if you opt for this kind of case from a yard sale, you can save about 100 bucks. You can also skip on the USB 3.0 adapter and the flash drive and just use an SSD if you have that lying around. So yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. I would also like to thank my patrons, Mitchell Valentino, Remus Iliash, Ray Piria, and everyone else who supports this channel. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.